Nestled in a charming and serene village, there lived a man of peculiar circumstances, a man named Okonkwo, who had two wives and two daughters. His first wife, Oba, and his second wife, Uru, shared a home with their two daughters, Oga and Oluchi. Oluchi, a girl of unparalleled beauty, was the pride of the family, her charm and grace admired by all, even the king's son. The prince, enchanted by Oluchi's allure, vowed to make her his bride, a declaration that sparked envy in the heart of Oba. Oluchi, a kind-hearted and warm soul, was loved by all for her friendly demeanor and willingness to help. In addition to all her good qualities, she was an amazing dancer as well. This made her stand out during any gatherings and festivals that were held in the village. She was oblivious to the prince's affection, lost in her daily routine of chores and farm work. The prince, captivated by Oluchi's grace, would often seek her out, leaving Oga feeling overlooked and in the shadows of her sister's beauty. Oba, Oluchi's stepmother, developed jealousy, envy and hatred towards Oluchi and wanted to bring her down by all means and in the process ensure that her own daughter Oge was in the spotlight. In an attempt to tarnish Oluchi's reputation, Oba enlisted the help of a notorious hooligan named Ofo. She plotted with him to have Oluchi raped on her way to the river. The plan was set in motion, but on the day of the intended attack, disaster struck. As the men lay in wait for the maiden in the bushes, one of Ofa's accomplices was bitten by a snake in the bush. Ofa Agwa Atalam, Agwa Atalamu, which translates, Ofa, a snake has bitten me. His screams gave away their position, which alerted the innocent girl who had already walked close to the trap. He screamed and stumbled out of the bush. Ofa stood confused and not knowing what to do, but Aluchi rushed to the scene. Ah, Ofa, what are you doing in the bush and now you've gotten your friend bitten by a snake? She instructed Ofa to lay him down and taking off her scarf, she tied the bitten leg firmly, preventing the poison from spreading. Don't worry, young man, you will not die, she assured him as she gave him some water to drink from her pot. Then she helped Ofa carry him into the village for proper treatment. The men were overwhelmed by her kind gesture and immediately called off the deal they had with her stepmother. Ofa threw Oba's gift on her face, announcing that he's not part of any plot against Oluchi. Feeling bad about this failed attempt, Oba concocted another cunning plan. She knew Oluchi always passed by a goldsmith's store whenever she was going to the farm. The goldsmith's son, Okiki, had an eye for Aluchi and always greeted her specially whenever she passed by, sometimes even inviting the maiden into his father's shop to spend some time with him. Oba visited the store and pretended to be interested in buying one of their gold pieces. But then when Okiki wasn't looking, she left with the gold piece in her possession. The innocent boy assumed she may have forgotten and will definitely return it back. The next day, as Oluchi left the house for her farm run, Oba planted the stolen gold piece in Oluchi's basket back at home and sneakily followed Oluchi through the village. Oba's plan was to accuse Oluchi of theft right at the goldsmith's shop, tarnishing her image in front of everyone that would be there. When Oluchi arrived at the goldsmith's shop, Okeke greeted her as usual and invited her in for a plate of hot soup. But just as Aluchi sat her basket down, Oba came in and immediately and accused her of theft. Bring out the gold piece you picked from Okeki's shelf just now. I have warned you and taught you and your sister never to take things that don't belong to you. It seems you are bound to bring shame on our family. Bring it out. Oluchi, stunned by the false accusation from her stepmother, quickly tried to clear the air. I don't know what you speak of, Neoba. Oba, without another word, simply dipped her hand into Aluchi's basket and brought out the gold piece. The entire crowd screamed in amazement. Ah, Aluchi! 
Some carried their hands on their heads in disbelief. Such a beautiful girl. Oh dear, one said. And we thought she was a saint, said another. Oluchi, lost for words, simply stood with her mouth open. Oba, I did not take or place that gold piece in my basket. Okeki, okay, this is not true, Oluchi tried to defend herself. Just when she was about to burst into tears, Okeki spoke up, revealing Oba's deceit. He explained how he saw Oba take the gold piece the day before, but assumed she would return it. The crowd turned on Oba, yelling at her for accusing her stepdaughter innocently. She argued in shame, You people believe this little boy over me? I've said what I said. She proclaimed and fled the scene. Oluchi, shaken and desperate, reported the situation to her mother back at home. Her mother, with a heavy heart, urged her to stay vigilant. Furious and desperate, Oba set her sights on the upcoming village festival. A long-standing tradition forbade any maiden from visiting the village stream during the days leading up to the celebration. Those who defied the rule, it was said, would face strange encounters and even death. Determined to destroy Oluchi's reputation, Oba was willing to risk it all, even if it meant defying a tradition that had been in place for generations. This tradition has been around for the longest time anyone could remember, though no one knows why it remained so. And so far no one has defiled the tradition, as every family ensured to keep to it during the festival. Oba, with a sly grin, realized that it was her turn to cook for the entire family that day. She saw this as the perfect opportunity to carry out her sinister plan. She deliberately sent her own daughter on a far-off errand, instructing her to stay away for the entire day. With a wicked glint in her eye, Oba approached Oluchi. Oluchi, my dear, I am in dire need of your assistance. I fear our pot of water has run empty, and I must insist that you retrieve more from the stream immediately. Oluchi, taken aback, reminded Oba of the looming danger of venturing near the river that evening, but Oba would not be swayed. She threatened Oluchi, reminding her that she would be the one to blame if the family went hungry that night. Oba reassured Oluchi that the tradition was nothing more than a superstition, a mere means to add importance to the festival. With this threat looming over her, Oluchi was trapped. With her parents nowhere in sight, she reluctantly agreed to retrieve the water before the day grew any darker. Oba peered through the window, her heart racing with excitement as she watched Oluchi leaving the compound. Little did Oluchi know the danger that awaited her on her journey to the Forbidden River. Oluchi walked through the lonely bush path, looking out for any strange movements and hoping she would see anyone, but the silence was scary and the path seemed deserted, her heart pounding in her chest and her senses on high alert. The moon cast eerie shadows on the ground and the silence was deafening. She reached the riverbank, the gentle mist swirling above the water's surface. The tension in the atmosphere was palpable as she stepped into the cool water, her movements deliberate and silent. But just as she dipped her pot into the river, the air around her shifted. With a burst of light, four glowing skeletal figures emerged from the water, their voices ringing out in unison. Young maiden, if only you had not disturbed our water, you would have been safe. Oluchi froze, her body rigid as fear gripped her. She tried to move, but an unseen force held her in place. Her eyes darted around, taking in the grotesque sight before her. One skeleton had its eyes bound with a red cloth, another had its ears covered. A third carried a bag while the fourth had nothing in its bony hands. The first skeleton stepped forward, its bones creaking. It has been too long since we have tasted the flesh of a maiden. The others murmured in agreement. This one is truly beautiful and smells of honeysuckle. 
this year's festival is truly in our favor. The skeletons circled around Dolucci, their voices a chilling whisper. Such a foolish child to have come to our water on this day of all days. Olucci stood, frozen in terror, as the skeletons closed in around her. With a wave of the fourth skeleton's hand, Olucci found herself released, but her legs remained rooted to the riverbed. What is your name, fair maiden? Olucci, she answered in a shaky voice. I am he who seeks for pleasure, Olucci, he spoke its voice echoing through the stillness. Tonight, I wish for you to dance for me. Olucci's heart raced as she looked upon the grotesque figure before her. Greetings, great spirits of the river, but, but there is no music, she stammered, her voice trembling. And what if I fail to please you with my dance, she inquired. Oh, Okoro's bag contains our tools of judgment, it responded. I'll cut off your two legs and take them with me so you will never dance again. The fear in her took a new height, and just then an ancient drum began to beat, its rhythm pulsing through the air. Oluchi closed her eyes and began to dance, her movements graceful and fluid, since it was something she was good at. The first spirit was pleased with her dance. You have pleased us, Oluchi, the skeleton said at last you may keep your legs. The second skeleton spoke up, the one who had his ears covered with leaves, its voice stern. Why did you come to the river on this forbidden night? My stepmother forced me to come, Oluchi replied, her voice barely above a whisper. She threatened to let the entire family go hungry if I did not fetch water for her. She speaks the truth, he declared, but what if I had lied? Oluchi asked with fear. Oh, Okoro's bag contains our tools of judgment. I'll cut off your tongue and take them with me so you will never have to lie again. Then the one who had his eyes covered removed the covering, and his eyes shone bright and glowed at Oluchi. Oh, she is of a pure heart as well. She habers no evil against anyone, he declared. And what if I had evil in my heart against anyone? Oluchi asked once again. Oh, Okoro's bag contains our tools of judgment. I'll cut out your heart and take it with me, so you will never have to think wickedly again. But you are a maiden of pure heart. You are truly lucky. The fourth skeleton spoke up, its voice deep and rumbling. We are the bringers of both fortune and death paving the way for a glorious festival. Long ago, a wicked princess dared to visit our river a few days before the festival to get our fortune, but she was not pure of heart and couldn't please us. She could not please us, and her body was never found. The villagers only came to pick up her body parts. Ever since nobody dared to visit us again, not even for our fortune, Oluchi trembled at the revelation, but the skeletons were not yet finished. You have passed all of our tests, Oluchi, the fourth skeleton said, and so Okoro's bag contains our gift to you. Okoro dipped his hand in his bag and brought out a handful of beautiful precious ornaments, gold and silver, wrapped together and handed to Oluchi. Oluchi tied the treasures in her clothes, quickly fetched her pot of water and hurried out the river, rushing through the bush path leading back into the village. She was startled by Ofo, who jumped out of the bush right in front of her. What was all that, Oluchi? I saw all that happened in the river. How can Mama Oba be so wicked and want to destroy you by all means? A startled Oluchi responded, Oforma, you again. I myself cannot answer your questions. Oh, for I thought I was going to die today, but instead I have been given riches from the spirits. Offer escorted her home safely. Oba received the shock of her life as she saw Oluchi walking towards the house with her water pot carried by Ofo and a crowd of villagers following behind her. For once, she thought she had been exposed again 
but Oluchi had a smile on her face. Offa wasted no time to narrate Oluchi's good luck to all the villagers along the way. That night, the village buzzed with excitement over Oluchi's miraculous gift from the river spirits. But while others celebrated, Mama Oba's anger simmered. She grabbed Oluchi by the arm and dragged her into her hut, calling for her own daughter, Oge, to join them. Tell us everything that happened at the river, Mama Oba demanded of her. Oluchi recounted her experience in a trembling voice, after which Mama Oba sent her away, keeping Oge behind. You will go to the river tomorrow night, Mama Oba declared to her daughter. Oge protested, her voice shaking. I don't think I can face those spirits, Mama. Did you hear the things Oluchi described? But Mama Oba would not be swayed. You will do as I say, even if you don't want the treasures. Think of what it will do for your poor mother, you selfish child. She taunted her daughter all through the night, heaping insults upon insults on her and comparing her to Oluchi. By morning, Oga had agreed to do the biddings of her mother. That evening, Oga reluctantly made her way to the river, dressed in a seductive manner at her mother's insistence. Mama Oba hid through the bushes and followed behind her from home. By the river, she hid in the bushes, watching and waiting. As Oga approached the river, the air grew thick with tension. She walked boldly into the river and dipped her pot, but nothing happened. She threw away the water and dipped her pot a second time. And this time, four spirits emerged from the waters as before. Young maiden, if only you had not disturbed our water for a second time, you would have been safe. They said in unison as they walked towards her. Ogle remained frozen in her position and the spirits moved through the river and circled her, then released her again. I am a seeker of pleasure, and today I'd like you to cook for me, the first spirit said to her. Olga spoke boldly. I don't know how to cook. I thought you only requested a dance because as you can all see, I came prepared, and I know my price will be bigger. The spirits looked at her closely and knew something wasn't right, but they continued. Why did you come to the river during this forbidden season? A second skeleton asked firmly. I felt like fetching some fresh stream water to wash some clothes. A lying tongue, I see, the spirit declared softly. Then the third skeleton removed his scarf from his eyes. His glowing eyes turned blood red in an instant. She is not of a pure heart. You have habered evil against someone. Today you will die. Oge stammered in fear as she tried to protest but none of them felt like listening to her. They all spoke in one voice. You have failed all our tests, maiden, and your disrespectful attitude is not helping your case. You are as good as dead, but you will serve a better purpose to us in the spirit realm if we take you whole. You shall remain fixed to the riverbed through this night, but as the moon leaves the sky in the morning, you shall be drawn into our world where you shall spend the rest of your miserable days as our slave. A whirlpool appeared around Oge's legs as she screamed in frustration. Please, great spirits, please forgive me for lying. My sister came here yesterday and got treasures. My mother had forced me to come get mine today. Please forgive me. But her pleas fell on deaf ears. And as she spoke, the spirit submerged back into the debt of the river leaving her to her new confines. Oba held her mouth tight as she cried in the bush. She turned and ran back full speed to her home, crying and crying. On arriving at the compound, she met Ofor, talking with Oluchi in front of her hut, and falling to the ground, she narrated to Oluchi what just happened. Without even thinking, Oluchi screamed, Mama, what have you done to my sister? Why would you send Oge to them? Oba, I will not forgive you if anything happened to my sister. She ran into her hut, grabbed her treasures from yesterday and ran at full speed. 
headed for the river. A confused Ofa didn't understand why Oluchi should bother so much, but he ran after her in the same direction. Oba and Uru, Oluchi's mother, followed after them, calling out for her to slow down. Oluchi ran non-stop till she arrived at the river to find Oga stuck in the water and crying her eyes out. She jumped into the river without thinking and tried to help Oga but couldn't. She instructed those running after her to stay away from the river. Then she yelled at the top of her voice. Great spirits, please come to me. It is I, Oluchi. She called out severally but no responses came forth. Then she took Oga's pot and dipped it into the river. The four spirits emerged from the waters in response. Fair maiden. They all spoke in one voice. Our business with you had ended. Why trouble our waters again? Oluchi went ahead to plead forgiveness for her sister's foolishness. She narrated that Oge was naive and was only misled by her greedy mother. The spirits looked at her in silence. Fair maiden, there is only one thing that speaks volume to spirits, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth and a head for a head. Only sacrifice speaks louder than words to us. To save your sister, you must give something of great value and life-transforming sacrifice in return. Life-transforming? I have something life-transforming. Here are my jewelries from yesterday. I have not taken anything out of it. Please have it back and release my sister, Oga. Ofo almost screamed from their hiding place in the bushes, but Oba grabbed his mouth. Shut up your mouth before you get us all killed. The spirits looked at each other, their eyes glowing with a fierce hunger. At last, they spoke. Very well, we accept your offering. Your sister is free to go. With a wave of their hands, the whirlpool around Olga's began to dissipate. She stumbled forward, coughing and sputtering as she emerged from the water. Oluchi rushed to her side, helping her to the riverbank. One of the spirits spoke up again. For your selfless act of kindness, we have decided to gift you with a parting gift. A little glowing treasure flew from the spirit's bag and landed on Oluchi's hand. Such a kind heart should not leave empty-handed. The jewel shall bring you goodwill and great fortune in your new home. Oluchi didn't really understand what they meant, but she held on to the precious jewel given to her. As they made their way back to the village, the spirits watched from the river, their eyes fixed upon the sisters. Such a selfless level of kindness and love, one said to the other as they went back into the waters. Oba, Oga's mother, had witnessed it all. She saw the sacrifice Oluchi had made and the love she had shown for her stepsister, Oge. And in that moment, something shifted within her. She fell to her knees, tears streaming down her face. I am sorry, she whispered. I have been blinded by my own greed and I have wronged you both. Please, my daughters, forgive me. And so Oba's heart was changed and she vowed to be a better mother to Olga and Oluchi. From that day on, she worked to repair her relationship with her daughter and with Oluchi. In the following days, the prince, on hearing about all that had transpired in the life of Oluchi, decided that the festival was the best time to make his intentions known. So, during the festivities, he had gone on his knees before the entire kingdom to ask for Oluchi's hand in marriage. The entire village erupted in happiness and singing, seeing Oluchi blessed beyond measure with the position of royalty. They all knew that she would not only be a good and kind wife to the prince, but also when the time arises, she will become one of the best queens the kingdom will ever know. And so the sisters and their mothers lived in peace, their bond stronger than ever. They had faced the darkness and emerged into the light, Oluchi's love shining brighter than any treasure. And so, the story of Oluchi and Oge serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of kindness, selflessness, and the power of sacrifice.
It teaches us that our actions have consequences and that the choices we make can have a profound impact on those around us. The moral lesson of this story is that true strength lies not in what we take, but in what we are willing to give up for the ones we love. It reminds us that the bonds of family and sisterhood are unbreakable and that love and compassion can heal even the deepest wounds. In the end, it is through Oluchi's selfless act of sacrifice that she is able to save her sister and mend the broken relationship with her mother. It is a powerful reminder that it is never too late to change, to repent and to make amends for the mistakes of the past. May we all strive to be more like Oluchi and may we always choose kindness, love and sacrifice over greed, anger and bitterness. For it is only through these virtues that we can truly find happiness, peace and fulfillment in our lives. Thank you for watching and see you in our next story. Don't forget to check out our channel for more amazing stories.